Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Kaylee, and on this channel we cover all things true crime, lifestyle, travel, and just generalized vlogs. But you have stumbled across our true crime section of the channel, so if that is something that you think you are not going to be comfortable with, uh, some of our true crime stories can get a little in-depth um, and might have details throughout the case that you're not comfortable with. So if that is the case, please skip to one of the other videos. I'm sure there'll be something here on the channel that you will enjoy. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. It really does help our channel grow. Uh, our analytics are telling us that the majority of our viewers are not subscribers. So please feel free to subscribe. It is free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, if you haven't gathered by the title and you don't know who this victim is, the victim is Luke Batty, who was an 11-year-old boy. So again, a, an extra warning if you are not comfortable with this uh, discussion or this case, please click to another video. This story starts with Rosie Batty, who was born in 1962 in Nottinghamshire in England. Now, Rosie was raised by her father and her grandmother and some nannies because, sadly, her mother passed away when she was just six years old. In 1992, Rosie gets a job at a recruitment company here in Melbourne, Victoria. This is where she meets Greg Anderson for the first time. They, they hit it off and they start a romantic relationship which lasts for about two years. Rosie did end this relationship after the two years though because Greg, he, he started to show some abusive tendencies and Rosie was not at all comfortable with this. Greg Anderson was born on the 3rd of November 1959 and throughout his entire adult life he really struggled to ever keep down a job. He always presented himself immaculate and very well dressed and groomed and things like that. But at his jobs, he just, he wasn't able to follow direction and he had a real problem with authority or more so that he just wouldn't follow the simple directions of, say, his management team or something like that. If he thought he knew a better way of doing it, he would do that and just always go against the grain, so to say. But this, of course, led to Greg being fired from many jobs and he really just, he never held a job for very long at all. Now, after Rosie ends the relationship with Greg, eight years pass and the pair, they have very little contact. It is until 2001 that Rosie sort of, she retouches base with Greg and the pair start up a sexual relationship. Rosie has always made it very clear that she was never in a full relationship with Greg. Uh, it was strictly sexually based and during this relationship, she becomes pregnant. Now, Rosie, she had never planned on having children throughout her life, so this was a surprise pregnancy. Once she found out that she was pregnant, she was very excited and she could not wait to meet her new baby. During the pregnancy, though, Greg, he started to become abusive again towards Rosie. He would verbally abuse her and say things like, don't you expect me to get a job? I will not be, you will not be having 12 months off to just sit on your fat ass and things like that. Greg really could not handle that Rosie was a strong, independent woman. Soon after Luke was born, Greg and Rosie's relationship just, it went back downhill. Uh, they got into an altercation one night where Greg picked up the coffee table and threw it across the room. Now, Rosie at the time, she still had her stitches in from a C-section when she was giving birth to Luke. So this poor woman, you know, she she was in no fit place to be dealing with people carrying on like this. And during this altercation, they did uh, come into a struggle together, which resulted in Greg assaulting her. Rosie has very limited contact with Greg throughout the early stages of Luke's life. He does have a relationship with Luke at this point, but it's very, very simple and restricted. Now, in 2004, Rosie and Greg have another physical altercation that was documented. Now, there were many different um, times when Greg would assault or verbally abuse uh, Rosie, but I'm just going to pinpoint the main ones that were listed. So please note that this happened a lot throughout this poor woman's life. She put up with a lot. But on this occasion, uh, Greg, he assaults her physically and then threatens to kill her, which results in Rosie going and getting a intervention order on Greg. Now in 2006, Greg's access to Luke becomes restricted even further. 
Greg is really starting to become delusional. He would talk to random people that weren't there. He would fly off the handle very easily. He just, he wasn't a stable person. At this stage, he's still unable to hold down a job, which is now resulting in him living in his car or staying at friends' houses. He really was not able to provide a stable arrangement for Luke to even visit because he had nowhere to physically go. He had no home, no, you know, he, he just was not having a stable lifestyle at all. But throughout everything, Rosie has always stated that she wanted uh, Luke and Greg to have a relationship. She understood that there needed to be a relationship there. Greg was his father. And at, throughout all this time, he never had done any physical violence to Luke. He'd never threatened Luke or anything like that. And he did still have some very restricted access so they could have that father-son bond. Luke, even though he was only a young boy, he was loving life. He had a fantastic personality and he was very bubbly. He had a fantastic relationship with his mum. They were very close. And even though he and his dad were not as close as uh, Luke and Rosie were, he did say he loved his dad to bits. Luke never expressed any fear when he was like with Greg or anything like that. He did know, and especially as he sort of got a bit older, he knew that Greg wasn't like normal dads. He, he was definitely... You know, sometimes he embarrassed Luke and there was certain behaviour things that happened from Greg that Luke knew was not right, but he still loved his dad anyway. Now, like most kids, Luke loved Lego and he loved playing with Star Wars Lego. He loved the colour yellow. He loved sports. He loved footy and he especially loved cricket. In November of 2012, Greg was at the Melbourne Public Library and it was here that he was caught looking up child pornography. Now, it wasn't until January 22nd, 2013 that the police investigation starts. Police plan on placing charges against Greg. The problem is they're actually unable to find him. He does not have a physical residential address. So now on the 28th of January, a warrant is issued for Greg's arrest. They do manage to find Greg and they place him under arrest. He goes through the interview process and after this he is granted bail. Apparently the charges that were going to be laid against him were of the minuscule sense and they believed that he would be fine to go out on bail. But Greg, he does not follow the conditions of bail and his bail is now void. Now when police do cross paths with Greg again, they go to arrest him. The problem is now there was a system error and there were parts of the warrant missing. So the police were unable to arrest Greg at this time. On the 8th of May, Luke is playing football and Rosie, she notices that Greg has arrived at the football match. Now she still has an intervention order against Greg, which stops him from coming anywhere near her. So she rings triple zero and the police come. Unbeknownst to Rosie, though, there was already an undercover police car there at the football match. Again, there is a problem with the warrant and the police are unable to arrest Greg. Now, this has been like a clerical error or an error on the systems. And now this has happened twice that they have gone to arrest Greg and have been unable to because of paperwork. And remember, at this point in time, Rosie, she doesn't know about the child pornography charges because of the Privacy Act. That information about Greg was not released. On the 29th of May, so this is all within a month, uh, Rosie and Luke are at the Sporting Reserve again and Greg shows up again. This time, though, the police, they finally have all their paperwork in order and when they arrive, they arrest Greg. Whilst in police custody, Greg, he applies for bail three times. The first two times he is denied because he doesn't have a physical residential address. But he manages to get one of his friends to agree to put his address down and say that, yep, yeah, Greg can come and stay here. That's not a problem. So the third time he applied for bail, he was granted it. Rosie was never informed that Greg had been released from police custody or that he had new bail conditions, but she did manage to get another invention order for herself and for Luke. On January 9th, 2014, so a good six months later, Greg was meant to go to court. He, of course, did not arrive and a new warrant is issued for his arrest. On the 12th of February, 2014, Rosie and Luke are at the sporting recreation field again. Uh, Luke's practicing for cricket. 
Greg then shows up and during this point in their life, they had an agreement that Greg was able to visit Luke during the weekend, during sporting activities in a public place, basically like this. So cricket practice, he was allowed to go and watch and things like that. As the cricket practice was coming to an end, Luke went up to his mum, Rosie, and asked if he could just have a few more minutes with his dad. Greg was bowling balls to him for him to hit in the cricket pitch area. Rosie said that was fine because she was there. She was able to watch everything. There were other parents there. You know, she didn't see any intimate danger coming. At 6.30 p.m. though, as all the other parents are starting to leave, Rosie hears this horrible sound. She looks towards the cricket pitch and she sees Greg standing over Luke uh, with a cricket bat in his hand. Greg had actually hit Luke in the head with the cricket bat and then proceeded to lean over him and stab him in the neck multiple times. Of course, poor Rosie, she panics and she starts screaming for someone to please call an ambulance and the police. But while this is happening, she doesn't realise what has actually happened. She just sees Luke on the ground with Greg sort of over the top of him. She, at this point, thinks that it's all been like a big accident, but Luke is injured. So she doesn't go over to the cricket pitch. She stays back and she tries to get, like, she gets help, basically. Luke's cricket coach was still there, by the way, and he decided he would go and try and help and see what had happened. He, as he gets closer to the cricket pitch, Greg starts telling him to stay away, keep back. Uh, the cricket coach, he asks Greg, what's happened? Is everything okay? Is Luke okay? And Greg tells the cricket coach, yes, it's fine. Everything's fine now. He's going to go to heaven. Now, the paramedics, they arrive by 6.45 p.m., but they're unable to get to Luke. Greg is now standing there with the knife in hand and not allowing anyone to go anywhere near Luke or come close to the situation. The police arrive by 6.50 and they are starting to assess the situation. They can see what's happening. They understand that Greg is now preventing Luke from getting any help. So they they head straight towards Greg, obviously, as they would. That's their job. They're, they're there to help the situation. But Greg lunges forward towards the officers, so they capsicum spray him. But with the wind coming across and things like that, it just wasn't enough prevention. And Greg again goes towards the officers with the knife in hand. It's at this point that one of the officers shoots Greg in the chest. Now, unfortunately for Luke, the paramedics did declare that he was deceased at the scene. And Greg was also flown to the Alfred Hospital for emergency surgery, but he was declared deceased upon arrival. Throughout investigations after this horrific event, uh, people started to say they believe that Greg had planned this as sort of a murder-suicide via the police option. Now, remember, he, he was delusional and he, he just was not right throughout many years. He never was diagnosed to have something wrong with him, but the people around him said, you know, he would talk to himself, he would fly off the handle, things like that. So he just couldn't have been all there to do that to your own son. I, I mean, to do that to anybody, but your own son, there's definitely not something right there for that to have happened. Rosie Batty, this poor woman, she has just lost her son and this woman, she just, she's a powerhouse. This woman, she's a total inspiration. After everything that has happened, she becomes an advocate for um, domestic violence and domestic abuse. She brings so much awareness to the problems at hand. She becomes Australian of the Year and just, you know, this woman, she, I'm not joking, she is a powerhouse for, like, the advocacy of domestic violence and things like that. She really does, like, my hat goes off to this woman for after everything that she's suffered to be able to just be the voice for so many others. It just, yeah, hats off to Rosie Batty. My final thoughts for this case, again, what is going on in our justice system? I mean, this case is a few years old now, so I understand things have been improved and changed, but I'm just seeing such a common theme throughout a lot of our videos that we're doing and a lot of cases that I'm going through that the justice system is just letting people down in so many different areas. I mean, this guy was released on bail numerous times and just why? Why was he out on bail? I mean, the guy, I don't care what level of child pornography you're on. That, why are you out in society for bail? I just, 
why? I just don't get it. And the fact that he didn't show up for multiple court appearances, I mean, that would have screamed, do not let out on bail. He, he will not come to the court appearance. Like, he's just not coming. I don't get it. And this poor woman, she's had to deal with him for years and years and years. Like, there's almost a good 15, 20 years that this woman has put up with this guy's ridiculousness. So that was today's case all about Luke Batty. My deepest sympathies and condolences to Rosie and her family. I just, I have no idea how you have gotten through any of this. You, again, my hat is off to you. If you have not hit that subscribe button, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really does help us grow. Please remember to take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.